Rabbits are the cutest. You already know this. And now you're thinking it's about time to bring one home. Or maybe you already brought a rabbit home and you're realizing rabbits are a little more work than you bargained for. Rabbits are often incorrectly thought of as easy beginner pets, like a hamster. In reality, bunnies have much more complicated needs. The amount of care that a rabbit needs are closer to the amount of care a dog needs, you just don't need to take your rabbit out for a walk. Maybe a little more work than you first thought. The most important parts of rabbit care are providing a healthy diet and a large enclosure. Once you have that taken care of, you can focus on rabbit proofing your home and providing them with toys and social enrichment. Other basics of rabbit care include litter training your rabbit, grooming, and learning how to properly hold them. The average lifespan of a rabbit is about 10 years. This estimate will vary a little bit, depending on the breed of the rabbit and the conditions they live in. But when you get a pet rabbit, you need to understand that this is a long-term commitment. A rabbit's long life expectancy means that they can grow to be amazing companion pets, just like a cat or dog. But it also means we have to consider the possibility of moving with a rabbit, or caring for them in their old age. Before you make the decision to adopt or purchase a rabbit, take the time to really consider the amount of work it will take to care for them for their whole lives. They are worth all the trouble they give you and make amazing pets. But you need to be informed and make the decision for yourself. Let's start with the basics. Having a healthy diet is absolutely necessary for your rabbit's well-being. Rabbits have a very sensitive digestive system, and problems with their gut is one of the leading causes of illness and death. So what does a healthy rabbit diet look like? Hey, A full 80% of your rabbit's diet should be grass hay. Timothy hay is best because it is high in fiber and it is rough, making it good for rabbit teeth and digestion. You'll want to get a big bag of hay and make sure you never let your rabbit run out. Hay keeps their digestive system moving properly and helps them absorb the nutrients their body needs. Most pet stores, even those that don't have much in stock for rabbit supplies, will have bags of Timothy hay. This is good and healthy hay to make up the base of your rabbit's diet, but it's also a good idea to add in other grass hays, such as orchard, meadow, or oat hay, to add some variety and encourage your rabbit to eat more hay. Some brands will sell bags of hay that are already mixed, but you can also get the different types of hay separately and mix them together. You could even purchase large bales from local farmers if you want to get the freshest possible hay for your rabbit. Leafy greens. Fresh leafy green vegetables introduce variety and flavor into your rabbit's diet, while also giving them the nutrients they need to stay healthy. You'll want to give your rabbit one to five cups of fresh greens daily, depending on how big your rabbit is. You can give this to your rabbit all at once or choose to portion it out over the course of the day. I choose to give my rabbit her daily greens during dinner time but might give her a little as a reward for good behavior at other points in the day. Most leafy greens you can find in a grocery store or grow in your garden are safe for your rabbit, but there are some varieties that you should give in smaller quantities and a few that you should avoid giving your rabbit entirely. Safe leafy greens for your rabbit. Arugula. Carrot tops. Leafy lettuces, red, green, romaine. Turnip greens. Dandelion greens. Mint. Basil. Cilantro. Watercress. Dill. Bok choy. Safe for your rabbit, but give in smaller quantities. Parsley. Chard. Spinach. Beet greens. Mustard greens. Greens to avoid giving your rabbit. Iceberg lettuce. Onion greens. Pellets. Pellets are not actually necessary for your rabbit's diet, but they do have some nutritional value and can be a healthy snack for your rabbit. You want to be very strict about the amount of pellets they get in a day. Too many pellets can quickly make your rabbit obese, causing a string of health problems. It's okay if they run out of pellets during the day, or if they gobble them up right away. You still don't want to refill their food bowl until tomorrow. You want to encourage your rabbit to eat more hay, and too many pellets will make them full before they even get to their main food. Set up an indoor enclosure. Most pet stores will try to sell you a small cage for your rabbit, similar to what they would offer for a guinea pig. In the vast majority of cases, the cages sold as rabbit cages are much too small. Unfortunately, this is because there is still a lot of misinformation out there about rabbit care. Rabbits won't be happy or healthy if they just sit in a tiny cage all day. So before you go out and purchase a new enclosure for your rabbit, you need to take the rabbit size and the cage dimensions into consideration. When getting an enclosure or hutch for your rabbit you want to make sure the cage is long enough for your rabbit to make three hops from one end to the other. Your rabbit should also be able to lay along the width with a little space to spare and stand all the way up on their hind legs without bumping their head on the top. The enclosure size will vary a lot depending on your rabbit breed, 
but for an average sized rabbit, about 5 pounds, you should aim to have an area of at least 4 feet by 2 feet. There are some hutches available that will be big enough, but I have found it easier to use a rabbit X pen instead. This makes cleaning your rabbit's area a lot easier too because all you have to do is move the gates and vacuum. You could also consider getting a large dog crate as a rabbit cage. These can be very easy to set up and clean and can offer plenty of space for your rabbit's home base. There are a few points you want to look out for, to make sure you avoid getting an enclosure not suitable for rabbits. A cage that is too small. The number one thing you want to avoid is getting a cage that is too small for your rabbit. This can lead to some serious health problems in the long run, not to mention a bored and unhappy rabbit. A cage with a wire bottom. Wire at the bottom of a cage can cut into a rabbit's feet and cause sore hocks. If you have a wire cage that is appropriately sized, you can put a mat down along the bottom to keep them from standing on wire all day. A hutch made of painted or toxic wood. Rabbits have an instinct to chew on everything, so they will definitely be trying to chew on a wooden hutch. This is why you want to avoid any painted wood, and you want to make sure the hutch is not made of wood that is toxic to rabbits, such as cedar, birch, and you. Exercise space. Rabbits, especially when they are young, have a ton of energy. So you'll need to make sure your rabbit gets a few hours of daily exercise time. You'll want to give your bunny an area that's at least 24 square feet for your rabbit to run around in for a few hours every day. Usually, people will just use the room they have their rabbit's enclosure in as the exercise space, but you could also allow your rabbit access to the whole house. Or you could set up an extra exercise pen for your rabbit to use. The best time of day to allow your rabbit out to exercise is in the morning or evening. Instead of having a rabbit closed up in an enclosure all day, many people choose to have what we call free-range rabbits. They let their bunnies stay out in the house all day long. This is great for rabbits if it's something you can do, but it's not always possible. Temperature. Rabbits have thick fur coats and tend to do better in temperatures that are slightly cooler than what humans usually prefer. Because of this, it's usually best to house rabbits on lower floors of the house, or even in the basement if possible. This will keep your rabbit's living space in the coolest part of the house. Even in the summer, you want to try to keep the indoor temperature below 75 degrees Fahrenheit, especially if the humidity is high in the region where you live. Rabbits can get easily get heat stroke in temperatures above 80 degrees Fahrenheit and long-haired rabbits, such as lion heads, are at a higher risk. In the winter, you may want to consider keeping your thermostat a little lower and wearing a sweater inside. Rabbits tend to thrive in temperatures that stay in the 50 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit range, so there is no need to keep their room extra toasty. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.